to creating Gutenberg blocks. So uh, hopefully we're going to go from getting started to start building some advanced blocks. We're going to go over some code samples and uh, feel free to ask questions as we go. Just briefly about me, I'm a senior developer and co-founder at Eleven Online. We started Block Party this year in anticipation of uh, WordPress 5.0. I installed my first WordPress site in 04, which uh, seems forever ago. I didn't like it much then, but I came back around to it. Um, these days, I'm mostly a React developer, and I do a lot of Python and uh, PHP web application stuff. I also do Android development and, of course, WordPress. And I've been doing React for about two years. OK, so hopefully you've been to some of the other Gutenberg talks. Um, if you haven't, I'll just go over this briefly. What is Gutenberg? It's the new WordPress editor as of 5.0, whenever that comes out. It's a what you see is what you get experience, um, more so than the current one, which is supposed to be the same thing, but uh, you get more interaction with the blocks that you're using. The content paradigm, again, is blocks. It's made out of blocks. You get to start thinking about building blocks, designing blocks. Everything is going to be a little block, a piece of content. Um, and Gutenberg comes with simple blocks, very simple blocks, but you can build custom blocks, and kind of the sky is the limit uh, so far. We've been building them for not very long, um, but we haven't really run into anything where we felt like this is not something that we can do even if there's some hacky things in it. We've been able to do everything. Um, Gutenberg is written uh, in React, and you can learn more at reactjs.org. All right, so I'm going to do a demo. My CEO said my slides weren't interesting, so he took them over and put in like this GIF to make it <laughs> to make it better. <laughs> so hopeful, hopefully that's not going to be what happens. All right, so we'll just do a simple little demo. Maybe some of you have already seen this, right? You have a title. You can put in some content in a paragraph, right? Uh, we can put in, you know, like a button. Uh, a lot of this stuff is not that different from maybe what you're used to. It's, it doesn't feel that different, right? Um, I'll just put in something. We can take a look at the front end. Right, and we have, our, we have some content. We have a button. Right, simple, pretty easy. Um, maybe not much to write home about in terms of this isn't earth shattering. Uh, but I think where Gutenberg gets way more interesting is when you start building your own stuff and you can do all sorts of things. So uh, you can really get something that maybe used to be uh, like a short code. You can build right here, like we'll say, Sheet plan, and it's ten dollars a month, right? And we'll add. It comes with this. You can add another plan. Twenty dollars a month. You get this, and you get that, and we'll make that green, right? And so you see that as you start building this out. Uh, users get a really good sense of what the page is going to look like. And it's much better than trying to guess at something like short codes or using ACF, right? And then right here. So then we can update, see on the front end. There we go. This is not, I'm not using a Gutenberg theme. This is just the default 2017 theme, 2017 theme. If you have a Gutenberg theme that's set up, you can more closely replicate your front-end styles in the Gutenberg editor. So you get things like that, and then you can get things, I think, that are kind of wildly interactive. Like, I'm from New Mexico. So has anyone been to New Mexico? Oh, wow, a lot of you. What's the question that you get asked in New Mexico? <laughs> yeah, all right, so <laughs> just in so in case you know you don't know, we'll we'll say we'll do a little pie chart, right, for green, and then you can do red. How many people vote red? We'll say 78. I prefer red, unlike a lot of people. And then 
there is another option like there's Christmas, uh, which I don't know. We'll give that orange, right? So you get you get that kind of interaction. You can rotate things, right? There, kind of whatever options you want to put on things, you can do, and you give users immediate feedback on what they're building. So I think when you start getting into this level of blocks, this is way more interesting and way more compelling than a site builder, like a traditional short code based site builder or anything else. And I think this is where Gutenberg gets really, really exciting for what the possibilities are, is when you start building these custom blocks like that. All right. We didn't start on fire. Thank goodness. Okay, so some basics. Gutenberg puts everything in the content. Um, if you are like me, I've been, I've heard a lot of people use ACF. My company uses CMB2. Uh, this is kind of a standard way of putting things post meta for all these little pieces of content. Post meta is bad um, in terms of performance and searching, but it's the tools that we we have. Uh, Gutenberg gets rid of that. We have we are putting stuff in the content area. Um, and then Gutenberg uses attributes <coughs> as settings on each block. I have some resources here. Um, there's the handbook, and then the thing that I've found the most helpful is just going to GitHub and reading the source code because a lot of stuff is not documented. Um, I'm sure you've heard other people say that today. So um, some basics, when you register a block, you have uh, an editor method and a save method. Uh, the save method takes the block attributes and saves them as HTML in the post slash page content area. So this is that some HTML from that pricing table. Um, and then the attributes are saved uh, as JSON in HTML comments, which is at first kind of weird to get used to, but uh, you can see that we just have some JSON with some, with some data. So on the editor side, what Gutenberg does is it reads those attributes from each block and then it puts them into your editor block. Um, it also does some validation where it says, given these attributes, does the HTML match what the save method tells me it should give me? Um, and that's just to maintain some integrity in case somebody is editing the HTML directly. Um, so the editor method is what allows users to interact with the block and change the attributes. And then the front end of the site, it doesn't show React, it just shows that HTML that's outputted. So just a very simple example. All my examples I'm gonna be using create Guten block. Um, we have register the block. Uh, we set some default attributes uh, with, with different types. Uh, the edit method might be just as simple as this. Uh, you have some built-in things like attributes, set attributes, focus. Um, and we can say if the element is being focused on, and this, is, this is, might not be familiar for you. Hopefully it's expressive enough. Um, but it, like say, if it's focused, we're gonna show this plain text object, which is something that you can interact with. Otherwise, we'll just show a p tag. Um, and then the save function can be as simple as this. So this, this is kind of as, you can make a block as basic as that. It, it doesn't need to be a lot of code. Uh, a lot of the built-in stuff makes it very easy to get started. Um, as I said, I'm using create Guten block to uh, do some of the scaffolding. Uh, and this is really easy. You can, once you have it installed, you have this command npm create Guten block. Uh, you cd into whatever directory that you make, whatever that name is, and then you run npm start, and it will uh, start a watcher, so it will watch your code and rebuild it whenever there's a change. So all the documentation is on the GitHub page. Okay, so let's start talking about what do you get for free? What's built in? 
So set attributes is going to be the way that you are making changes to the blocks. It's uh, built in, and all you need to do is say, uh, pass it in an object, key and value of, here's what I want to change, here's what attribute I want to change, and here's a new value for it. Um, focus and is selected uh, are ways that you can tell, is has the user clicked on your block? Are they trying to interact with it? And based on that, you can show or hide different things. There are a ton of editor components that are built in just ready for you to be, or to be used by you. Plain text, rich text, media upload, color palettes, drop down, uh, inner blocks, which is nested blocks, and then all sorts of controls like select control, toggle control, and many, many more. And all these, there's not always great documentation on them, but you can find them on GitHub under uh, either the components or the blocks. And then I'll show you in our examples how you can import them and start to use them um, with very little effort. Okay, adding more. So uh, I said before the front end doesn't show React, it's just your HTML, but that the editor, the Gutenberg editor, is all done in React. And you can basically add anything you want from NPM. I mean, there's certain things that are maybe not for React, but uh, there's a lot of libraries. Um, anything you can maybe think of for that, hey, I need some help, I don't know how to do this, there's probably an NPM package for you. Um, NPM has over 650,000 packages, so there's a lot of help. Uh, and it's very useful for extending default functionality. One way that we've used it is uh, color palette. The color palette has a drop down for custom colors. Um, the Gutenberg drop down doesn't let you put a drop down in the drop down. So if you want to have the color palette in a drop down, say I want to click this button to show more options and then I'll change the color. Um, you can't have that custom color picker uh, as built by Gutenberg because it will shut both drop downs when you open it. No problem, what did we do? We looked, okay, what's the library that Gutenberg is using? Oh, they're using Chrome Color Picker. So what did we do? We imported it and then we just used it and we were able to get around the problem of drop down within a drop down. The whole process took maybe five minutes and it was really useful to have all these packages available to us. We doing okay? I'm, I know I'm moving fast. I want to spend more time on some examples. Yes? Um, I'm pretty familiar with Java. Um, in Java, you got like a runtime environment and you've got a Ruby Cherry with some development kits. Is there actually going to be like a development kit for Gutenberg where we're going to be push all the actual um, packages that Gutenberg is built on so we have access to them? So, kind well, okay. So it might make more sense with how w in the examples, but Gutenberg it exposes all of its components or most of its components and editors to you just through the global WP variable. Okay. Um, with the create Guten block, there is that's where you get the Webpack builder and stuff like that. But if uh, if you want to like ex make available some of your components maybe to other components, that has to be done in the same plugin. At least there might be a way to export it like Gutenberg does. There probably is a way to export it. Um, but I haven't played with that just to make it kind of globally available. So, um, so I want to go over some simple examples with you. I tried really hard to think about some of the lessons that I've learned and our team has learned and boil it down to as simple of examples as possible. Um, so I created two repos, uh, Gutenberg Simple Statistics and Gutenberg Simple Weather Block. And um, these are by no means exhaustive. <laughs> I just tried to keep it as simple as I could while exposing you to some of the concepts that we've uh, been using in developing these blocks. So I'll have the link on a few slides. So sim simple statistics, 
Um, some goals with this is we want to make a block where users can put in statistics, as many as they want. Um, and then have a simple count up animation. You've probably seen these on a lot of sites. 10 million cups of coffee and 25 websites made, or hopefully it's not that many cups of coffee to websites. Um, and then what, what are some strategies that we want to use? Okay, so uh, typically attributes are just defined as, as one to one, like I have a title or I have some content or I have some text. Um, so we're going to use an array of statistics to allow some flexibility in the number. We don't care how many users want to put in. Let them put in a million or two, it doesn't matter. Um, and then since we don't get JavaScript interactivity, we're not putting a React component on the front end. Um, so our save method is only HTML, as I've mentioned before. We need another way to show that count up animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to save some data to data attributes. Um, and then we'll use a jQuery script to parse the attributes and to start the animation. OK, does that more or less make sense? OK, so let's, let's go over the code then. Well, first I'll, I'll do a little demo of it. So, All right, so we're going to add a statistic. You know, we'll do this. We'll just do. Right, and then, you know. Okay. And then we do have this little simple count up. Okay. Simple statistic block. Okay. So how do we do this in Gutenberg? All right, we're going to start. This is the, uh, the default pro project structure using create uh, Guten block. And the files that we really want to pay attention to are init PHP, and then in that's in source, and then source block block JS. So init PHP is super simple, super basic. All we're doing in this version is we are enqueuing some scripts, enqueuing some files, or uh, some styles. Uh, we have the, the block assets when with uh, create Guten block that gets created. Those are enqueued on both the front end and the back end. And then you have another set that are back end only. The back end only ones are typically, they're going to be your block editor, your, the JavaScript that we're going to be writing in block.js. Um, because again, React exists only in the dashboard. And then on the front end, we're just going to enqueue some simple things. There's a count up library that we're using and a peer library so that it only starts to count up when it appears on the page. And then our parser to parse the, the count up. Okay, so does so that all make sense? Hopefully this, this doesn't look that different than enqueuing styles and scripts anywhere in WordPress, right? Okay. Are we awake? Yeah? OK. <laughs> All right, good. So let's take a look at the JS code. Uh, we're importing some stuff, just the styles uh, that we have. And then we are importing underbar, underbar, the internationalization stuff from WordPress. Um, we are importing from WP blocks, our register block type, where we register a block type. And then we're just importing a plain text component, which again, built in to Gutenberg. OK? So far, so good. Um, register block type, we namespace it, and we give it a name. Uh, we give it a title, which shows up in that little plus button so you can find it. Uh, you do an icon from dash icons, or a custom one if you want. And then you can give some categories and keywords. And then again, we're saving attributes. OK, so the attributes are really important. Uh, remember what I said before, that uh, Gutenberg validates your uh, HTML based on your attributes. And one of the ways, one of the things that it needs is it does need you to define your attributes um, before you start. So this is super simple. We have stats. It's an array defaults to an empty array. 
okay? Um, and then we have a random key, which we're just using for the parser uh, so that we can keep everything unique um, in case that there's maybe more than one statistic block on a page. And uh, then let's move down to our edit function, okay? Again, attributes, set attributes, focus, set focus. This is all stuff built in that you just have access to. Um, we're gonna set a random key if we don't have one. Again, just for uniqueness. And then we're going to create a few pieces. So uh, we're gonna create our ability to add a row, okay? This is just a button that when we click on it, uh, we get the new stats, or we get the stats from our attributes, and then we add a new one, and then we set attributes to the new stats. So we have that empty stat to add to it. Um, it's pretty basic. Uh, we have delete stat, which does the opposite. It just slices the array at whatever index we're at so that we can remove it. And then again, we save our new attributes, our new stats. Is this, am I going too fast? I don't want to do like a lesson on React at the same time, but is this kind of following along? Okay. Uh, and then the return function, if you're familiar with React, that's kind of where whatever is displayed happens. And this is, again, it's, it's really simple. We have, uh, we just map through our stats and we have some stuff where we render uh, our plain text inputs and we have a render count up, which just starts the count up animation. And, uh, but the main part is that we are, um, if we come and we look at this, if we're not in focus, we're gonna show our stats just as HTML. If we are in focus, we're going to render our plain text input. Okay, so, all right, I don't know, you, you guys aren't giving me a ton of feedback <laughs> on if this is making sense. So, is this version all React now? Is yeah. Is there PHP anywhere in there? Yeah, our second example will use PHP. Oh, okay. Okay, so, but you'll still need JavaScript to at least do that uh, editor interactivity, okay. So, pretty simple, we have some help this is kind of a super hacky thing where we're saying if we're not in focus, we're gonna, after 100 milliseconds, we're gonna start the, the count up function. Um, but that's because the count up library otherwise will typically works on uh, document ready and jQuery. So, and then we have again, if we're in focus, we're gonna add a row, otherwise we're gonna show nothing. Uh, the save function is even simpler. We have, we just map through our stats and we put it out, we just export it as HTML, okay? The one thing that we're doing maybe a little different is we have this data value and data key um, and this is then what we're using in this function where all we're doing is when document on document ready, we're just going through, we're finding all the items that are be counting, being counted up. We have to assign them a unique key each. Um, and then we, as they appear on the page, we just parse through and we grab what value they're counting up to. And uh, we start a count up animation for it. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that's, we have this. Uh, this is one of the files generated by Create Gutenblock. This is just a plugin like any other plugin. You install it as a plugin and you activate it. Right, that was my next, okay, that's what I was looking for. So it's actually being installed as a plugin if I'm using it to run a custom code block? Yes, if you're using Create Gutenblock. So you, so it's something else? well, if you're, if you wanna, set it up as a part of your theme, you can do that too. The tooling around this, and the reason why all the examples are around this is that it's built and easy and you don't need to learn about Webpack or anything like that. Any other questions? Okay, 
So do you guys want me to go over any piece of that again? Uh, yeah. I just kind of have a question. Are you, so I might not be getting this, but are you usually using the jQuery and React stuff together in the editor? No. Okay. The editor is React only. Okay. I yeah. Yeah, so when, when this page loads, it's, this is the, if, if you take a look at, well, I guess it's in in both places, but what it's doing is it's looking for, when the page loads, it's just parsing through and looking for, what do I have this class? If I do, I'm gonna add an ID to it so that I can start an animation, and then I'm gonna look at the data value attribute and know that that's the number I need to count up to. So we don't get the React on, the front end, only in the dashboard. So I thought you said that you had jQuery package in the in the editor part of this React stuff. No. Yeah, when you said document ready React package. Yeah, so that's the so because we we're just saving HTML, we're duplicating effort. Okay? You'll see this in the other block too. There's a fair amount of duplicating effort with Gutenberg. Um, and so what we're doing is we are creating, our save function is creating a way that we can do something with it interesting on the front end with just a jQuery script, okay? Because in our React stuff, it's really easy to just, we can start this count up animation and it's great. We can just do it. That's going into the dashboard? Well, no, I mean, we, we're like including the library but we, we can do interactive things in the editor. We can do very interactive things in the editor. If you want to bring anything outside of just here's some HTML to the front end, if you want to have some kind of JavaScript action or uh, you know, maybe event listeners or whatever it is, that needs to be done and, uh, on the front end as well. And so the reason why I'm using jQuery is that jQuery is already a part of, you know, right. basically every theme. Right, but are you using jQuery in the editor to do the count up in the editor? No. Okay. That's all? No. Okay. So, you guys feel okay? Well, let's just go kind of back over the overview. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I did a hack, so we did a hacky thing where when it goes off focus in the editor, it starts the count up animation. Right. So we're just do saying when it's not in focus on after 100 milliseconds, just start the animation. Yeah, so so this yeah, so what this is is this is it's just a inline conditional. Are we in focus? If we are, do this, or you know, in this case, do this, otherwise do the other thing. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, return functions can either return arrays or parentheses, um, and those just represent different things that you're outputting as HTML. So um, this and map takes another return. So um, if you want something to show up using map, like if you're mapping through an array in ES6, you have to this is how you do it. You return also in your return. And if you get complicated pieces, you're returning in returns and returns, and you just, there's a whole bunch of pieces. Okay. So, right, so just again, going over our goals, we wanted to have people put in as many statistics as they wanted, and then have a simple count up animation. And we used an array to have flexibility, and then we, had to, since we don't get that JavaScript interactivity, we had to replicate that in a jQuery script and save those attributes just as, we were saving them as data attributes so that we could parse them. 
Okay. I know this is a lot, but... Well, we're getting JavaScript in the editor. We, we are only saving HTML, though, to the post content. Okay. All right. Simple weather block. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have called them simple, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's not that much code. Once you kind of get used to it, it's really not that much code. Um, but simple weather block, what are our goals? Okay. We're going to use the Open Weather API. Uh, we're going to allow users to set temperature units on a per weather block. Oh, and the Open Weather API is global, right? If you're going to put a bunch of weather widgets in, you probably are going to be using the same API key. Um, but we want people to set temperature and or cities and temperature units on a per block basis. Okay. Strategies, okay, so this one we're gonna get into PHP. We are gonna use server-side rendering on this block because we don't want to expose our API key, okay? Maybe you guys don't care about that, that's something I care about. I don't want people using my API keys. <laughs> so we're gonna save the API key on the WP options table so all our blocks have access to it. We're, and we're gonna use the inspector controls, which I'll get into more, for the temperature unit, and then we're going to use a uh, regular or almost regular React component for the edit method, so we have access to local state and the React component lifestyle. All right, so let's take a look at this one. I actually didn't test this. I hope my API key is still good. All right. Okay, there we are. That's our weather right now. And there it is on the front end. Okay. I know it's not very pretty. <laughs> so. Okay, so this one, let's start. We have a lot of the same stuff we saw before. We're in queuing styles, we're in queuing JavaScript stuff. Um, on the front end, we're not, we're, we don't have any JavaScript, so we're just in, in queuing the style. On the back end, we're in queuing our block, our React code, and then our CSS. Okay. Then we're doing uh, just a very simple piece of code. If you've ever registered new settings, this will look familiar for, to you. We just are registering a setting to save the API key. Um, and then we are going to register the block this time in PHP. Uh, a lot of the same things. We don't have to specify an icon or a title or anything like that, but we do need to use the same namespacing that we'll use on the JavaScript side. Uh, and we do need to set our attributes. And then the important part is there is a parameter for called render callback. And what this means is when this block is being rendered, uh, when, when PHP is creating the page, <coughs> what function, what method should I use to render this code? And that's what we have down here. So it's simple, we get the attributes, right? They're passed in just like they are uh, in the React code in the editor. We get our API key from the WP options table. If there's a city and an API key, then we build our request, we use WP remote get because the open weather API just does uh, get requests. Um, and then we use the response body to uh, just return some HTML down here. Okay, hopefully this doesn't look unfamiliar to you guys. So that all make sense? Okay. So what does our block look like? Our block is a little more complicated. Uh, we're going to import a lot more stuff. We're going to ins import inspector controls, button, text control, select control. Those will be for some of our options. Um, and then maybe I'll start at the bottom. So this is how we'll, we still need to register it also in JavaScript, 
and we're just going to give it a simple title, an icon. Um, and then the save function is really easy. Return null. This is uh, the easiest save function you'll write. Uh, because and why are we doing this? Because PHP is taking care, care of the rendering. Okay. Um, and then our edit, we're just going to pass in an editor component. Okay, which I'll show you above. And then I am including just a simple debalance, um, which I don't want to make excessive API requests when someone's typing in the city name, so we debounce that. Okay, so if, if you have worked in React, this will look super familiar. This is basically just a React component, and what are we doing? We have a constructor where we're setting some state. Okay, so uh, if you're not familiar with React and how state works, um, this is a super big topic. React is basically a state machine. Uh, you change the state and then the return function will change what it's outputting. Um, in this case, we want to have some uh, information that's local to the block, the block itself, uh, that isn't saved. So uh, typically what uh, a Gutenberg block will do is it'll save all that stuff in attributes, but we don't want to do that because we uh, can't get our like simple weather API key right from the attributes because it's saved as a, uh, in the WP options table. And then we don't know if we have weather yet from our, our request to the open weather API. Um, so we're just going to set some basic state variables and then uh, we're going to use the React lifecycle. Each React component has a whole bunch of lifecycle ci functions that are called when different things happen. So component did mount, okay? It mounted once, uh, we call it. Component did update. Uh, it, a re-render was called. There's a, there's a whole bunch of these and you kind of have to look at each use case and see uh, what, am I, what do I want to use at each time. Um, and people have very different approaches sometimes to this stuff. So our component did mount. What I want to do here is I want to just get our simple weather API key, our weather API key, or open weather API key, I should say. So all we're doing is this WP variable. This is just something available. It's uh, in Gutenberg that has all the, I don't know, has tons of stuff associated with Gutenberg. If you notice from up above, this is where we're importing a lot of things from, okay? And a part of that is we can make API requests. So we're going to get our settings from WP options so we can know what our API key is. Um, I have this did component update where I'm just saying if some things have changed, do I want to get the weather or not? Uh, and then we have save API key. Uh, this will do the opposite of getting the API key. It's going to save it to the database for us. Um, and again, we're using the wp.api stuff. Um, we have our get weather function, which we're debouncing again, uh, where we're doing the same thing we do in PHP. I wrote this in jQuery because I thought that might be more familiar to people. Um, so we're just making a uh, our get request to get our weather back. Uh, and then we have our render, which we're getting some data, we're getting our attributes, focus, set attributes, and then we're just trying to parse the uh, units so that they're a little more user friendly in case people don't. The default is uh, Kelvin, which is super not helpful for the Open Weather API. <laughs> um, but then Imperial for Fahrenheit, which most people that doesn't really say much to them. So, And then our return has, uh, we, this is where we get to our inspector controls. And just as a reminder of what those are, that's this stuff over here. These are our inspector controls. If you can see my mouse moving. Um, they're, they were called, they were called advanced settings at some point in Gutenberg, and I don't know what they're called now. Um, but this is where we get that helpful sidebar with, if you went to the last talk on Gutenberg that no one seems to know exists, apparently. Um, and what we're doing is there, we're saying again, is my block in focus? If it is, I want to show these 
controls. If you don't check if it's in focus, they will just show all the time no matter what block is selected. So make sure you use that in focus. And then we're using the select control. Again, a built-in thing that we're just allowing people to choose what type of units to show. We have a text control which shows uh, what the API key is if they have one or allows people to enter a new one. And then we have just a button where when they click on it, it will save the API key. And the button has this useful is busy thing. So if I click on this, there's a little animation that says something's happening. <laughs> um, OK, and then we have uh, what gets shown in the editor itself. Again, we say, are we, if we're in focus, we can show the city. If not, we'll hide it. Right? This is all pretty simple. Hopefully, it's starting to s seem familiar. We have our on change that sets the attributes. And then um, up above, I'm, I'm getting the weather from that local state. If you remember, when we get the weather, we save it in the state. Um, which again, don't want to save it in attributes because the weather changes all the time. And then we just display it so they get a preview, a preview of that. All right. Any questions on that? Um, so I'm kind of curious to see like what, how much of this like you're adding and how much kind of comes with it. If you were to just like install like the, um, the, the what is it, the the Uber? Um, yeah. From the repo, and then it installed it in the plugin like as is. Would it work? I mean, it just wouldn't have anything in it. Yeah. So you'd be able to just add it and do it like within the title. Yeah. It. When you come in, or it doesn't have anything, I think it has something editable. I don't remember. Does it, it do you remember? Yeah, yeah, there's a, it's just a simple block with like a div and some p tags, I think, and maybe a code block. I don't remember. Um, but it works. You can install it and it will work, and you can start messing around and building off of that. Um, you know, if you're going to import any of this stuff, bit you know, a lot of the places where you see comment, like comments at the end like this, that's stuff that's just done automatically in Create Guten Block. Uh, stuff without that is stuff that I added. Um, but like I said, that simple example that I showed in the slides earlier, like this is, this is as simple as it needs to be. Um, have a plain text that sets attributes on change to whatever your new title is. And then it's really up to you. Then it's up to you to say, I need this thing to have a certain background or whatever kind of CSS that I want around it. Mm -hmm. um, some of that stuff is possible just with the default p tag. Like I can, you know, put in some stuff. And then what do I have? I can change the text size. So there, there is some, some stuff that's, you know, that you can use just basically built in. But I think, you know, if you're building client sites, I don't think giving clients that amount of freedom is necessarily a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can create com very simple components that aren't that different than this that have all your styles and where they can't mess it up. No, it's in just in this block. And now if you added a new block, like with the same exact block below it, is it just not going to have that API key in there or will it? No, it will. Because that's, again, right, I can do, well, here, how about, I wonder what it's like back home. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. Right, so then. Each are pulling from that same API key, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we want that to be global so that people don't have to put it in all the time. And do you change it in one and not in the other? 
it would update everywhere. And then you know I can change I can change these and it will update. So there it's basic to begin with, I think, but everything is there for you to go nuts and to build super interactive things that are really easy to use. I mean, the ease of use thing is up to you in a lot of ways when you're building these. Okay, so <coughs> any other questions before we? Uh, I have that set so that it only does it, so I, that's why I debounce it, so if you're typing in the name, it doesn't do it on every keystroke, um, or if I change a setting, that's how often it does it. And then on, like for the user, when they're viewing the site, it just happens on page render, so one time. So in case you do this, um, say you can uh, create these blocks, mm -hmm. explain self-contained, basically the idea of how it Yeah, plug in. Yeah. Yeah, I think you just need node and npm. Well, it's a GitHub. Yeah, it's a tool it, that it generates a plugin for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where is the styling and all the things? Okay. So, what? As a part of it, you get these simple things, you have the editor, which I'm not using at all, um, but then you also have the stuff that's pulled in both places. There's some constants that are defined in, oh, common, that you can add to or use. These are just like some basic things. Um, but yeah, then it's just an SCSS file, and create Guten block will also compile that for you. And then I, I think a good strategy is to have minimal styling, very minimal styling, because you want, the th you want the block to take on the styles of the theme, right? That's kind of the point. So the less you can do with colors or things like that, and I did some of that here just because it was, I'm just doing a demonstration, um, but ideally you would have maybe only positioning and then whatever button styles are in the theme, it'll just take on, or whatever text styles, et cetera. So will the inherent theme affect custom blocks as well? Yeah, so if your theme is not Gutenberg ready, which the 2017 theme is not, uh, there are some differences in the front end and back end. Um, but what you can do with uh, theme that's ready is you can define colors. Um, you can do, so right now I only have, I don't know if this block does it. I don't think this one does, but there's an alignment option that's full width that has to be defined by the theme. Um, but otherwise you just get like a line left, center, or right. Um, but if your theme is ready for that full width alignment, then uh, you'll see that option as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, you still need a theme. You might not need as many theme files uh, in the future, but yeah, you still need a theme. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So, well, it's, it will be faster. The first version will be faster because the theme, when it's showing it to end users, is just rendering the HTML. So in our second example, we have a few extra steps. We're getting the, from WP options, we're getting our API key. Then we're making a request and then parsing it. So that will be a little slower. But otherwise, uh, you know, it's just HTML. 
we're not loading any JavaScript unless we're doing it on purpose, like with our count up animation. It's just HTML. So the whole point of a React.js is just for the editor built. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can also do it as React or whatever you want. That's kind of up to you of how you implement that on the front end. I just did jQuery because it's familiar and it's already being included. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. So to like make a block for single sign-on? Yeah. So, yeah, you'd have to implement a lot of logic for that to happen. You'd have to do some JavaScript logic, right? Probably, I mean, if it's like SAML based or something, you definitely want to hit your server and have your server generate all that stuff so it can read the certificates and everything and then make the request, and then you'd get the response back in PHP, and then whatever that AJAX function that you call from the front end in JavaScript would then, you'd get a response back, and then you'd take some kind of action. Okay, all right, so we're getting short on time. So just quick overview again. Uh, we wanted to save the API key globally, and then set the other options uh, per block, we use server side, our strategies are using server side rendering, so we don't expose our API key, using the WP options table, and then use the inspector controls for those, uh, for those other options. And we used a React component for the edit method, so we have access to local state and the lifecycle, React component lifecycle. Okay, so some gotchas. Uh, validation. I don't know if I've ever run into somebody who hasn't had some kind of problem with validation initially. Um, you re Gutenberg revalidates every time. So um, if you're making code changes, it's very understandable you're going to be breaking validation. Um, but if you're not making code changes, it's probably a problem with your attributes. Uh, and you need those default attributes for everything. Um, Arrays don't allow for declaration of sub-attributes. So arrays are great in some ways. It's kind of like using a Mongo database. Put whatever you want in there and nobody cares. Uh, on the other hand, you don't get some of that protection of saying these are the attributes I want to use. Um, set attributes is no callback. We've used hacky solutions like set timeout. Micah has mentioned he thinks there's another way that will talk about hopefully at the workshop tomorrow. Um, and then uh, using out of the box components, right? You saw that I was using, basically all the components I was using for editing were out of the box. Um, those are great, but they don't look like what it will look like on the front end. And that's why I was always using that focus. Are we in focus? If we are, show the plain text or rich text or whatever it is. Otherwise show just HTML so that users get a better sense of uh, what it's gonna look like on the front end. Um, and then inner blocks are a big gotcha that I spent a lot of time, well, I mean, maybe not a lot of time, a few hours one day banging my head against the wall with trying to use more than one, um, but inner blocks are global for each block. So that's the nested blocks. So you can't have one block with several sets of nested blocks. You can only have one. They share the state, so your, your content is replicated everywhere that you use it. All right, templates. Um, this is gonna be, this is what's gonna, I think, make Gutenberg really possible in the long term, is you can define templates. And uh, this I just pulled directly from the handbook. Um, they're registering a post type of book and saying, okay, post type book, here are the blocks that we wanna use. Here's the order that we want to use them in. We can pass in some default attributes, which is super useful. Um, and then you can lock the templates. So if you're building this book template and you don't want to give 
users the freedom to mess it up. You say, you don't get to add anything or move anything or do anything other than input content. Um, you can also do insert, which allows reordering if you want to live on the wild side, I guess. <laughs> All right, we've had questions throughout. I think I have four minutes left. It's kind of drinking from a fire hose, I know. <laughs> but look at the code. Uh, those are public repos. Um, you know, use those as starting points to say, hey, I want to build this thing and look at some of the solutions I used and say, you know, maybe I can do the same thing or come up with something better. And if you come up with something better, let me know. Yeah. So <coughs> I'm primarily like a theme developer. Okay. So It wouldn't be, it's just how you uh, include the files, that's all. So what you would do is you could use create Gutenberg block as is, take out the, um, you'll need to take out the, well, actually I'm not sure. You might need to take out the, oh, what is it called? All the comments in your like main file, in the plugin file so that it uh, doesn't recognize it as a plugin. That might not be true if it's in the theme directory. Um, but then you would just include, that's not true, it only looks in the plugins directory. So if it's in the theme directory, you just throw that whole directory in, and then in functions PHP, you would require it once. Do require once for that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this is part of the. Um, it's part of the register post type. So. It's just one of the options in, I think it's, it's a separate option from template, um, but it's, you would just add it at the end. What was your very first computer? My very first computer? I had, a, I had a DOS computer when I was little and I have no idea how old I was. And I don't, other, other than it was one of those laptops that wasn't a laptop, it was like a briefcase. <laughs> and it had a screen this big. I don't remember anything else about it. <laughs> <laughs> it had, I mean, it had uh, everything. It weighed probably 40 pounds and. <laughs> yes. Do you guys share a Slack channel or something where like the community and get together and build these code blocks? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know, do you know? Oh yeah, that's right. It is a lot. If I would recommend getting started with uh, React or just JavaScript, um, a lot of the stuff is really transferable. Um, I, w I think entirely transferable. There's some gotchas, there's some things like I mentioned that are kind of weird, um, but if you can develop in React, I don't think there's anything to stop you from developing in Gutenberg, and there's a lot of resources for React, and virtually none for Gutenberg. Well, there's, there's a couple, um, but I would say for me, if I wasn't able to read source code in Gutenberg, I would have been lost on a lot of things because the documentation is bad. But if you can read React in general, I think you should be able to read the source code. Um, and start small. That one example I had was really simple. Nothing was really, count that very simple example. That's enough to get started. That's already can be your first block. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it. I think it really depends on, you know, it depends on what your goals are and what you wanna. Uh, so, like, you, you mean in terms of like using a React component instead of just using the method, the edit method? Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I like the inline controls, if it's an array. 
um, or if it maybe makes more sense like to put in, like I'm adding the city, I should type in the city name. Um, I think that the inspector controls make a lot of sense if they're global to the block and then like most users aren't gonna need them or not need them very often. For the, for the arrays, you know, you can't, you don't have the inspector settings for an array, for each item in an array. So if you wanna have settings for a bunch of items in an array, then you really wanna have them with whatever front end thing is, like put a little gear and have a drop down for more settings. All right, any other questions? Yes. One final one, Bill. Okay. Um, are, are keys handling the CSS media queries or are the code blocks handling the The themes, the themes should be doing that. Thank you. Um, you might, I think there could be a use case for maybe showing or hiding certain elements in the block. But that might be as simple as there's a little toggle switch that adds like no mobile a no mobile class or something like that. All right, well, thank you guys. I hope that was helpful. Yeah.